Today I'm going to share with you tips for fixing your trashed hair. I think it's really important that you know that there are actually some things that you can do to help to bring your hair back from the dead and recover it so that you can go back to a color you like or styling that you like, etc. Tip number one is going to be to do a deep conditioning mask once a week or at least every two weeks and to use a cap and put on a heat cap over it. So these don't have to be expensive at all. And when I was a stylist in the salon, I used to do deep conditioning treatments on my clients all the time, all the time. Anytime I had enough time for them, I would just add it onto their service and do it for them so that their hair was, you know, just got a, a nice, nice treatment. Now, when you add the heat to the process, what happens is the hair will swell in the heat, and so everything that you have on it, whatever wonderful deep conditioning mask you have on it, will be able to get inside the hair just a little bit more. Now, super key is that when you take off the heat cap, and I am telling you these do not have to be expensive. I mean, in salon, we could charge $50 for a deep conditioning treatment, and, and I haven't been in salon for several years. You can get one of these caps for literally under $20, a bunch of plastic caps. You could use saran wrap in a pinch and you can do a deep conditioning treatment at home for pennies. Now, what's really, really important is after you remove the heat cap, you need to let your hair cool down all the way to where there is no warmth in it at all. Super duper important that you don't do a deep conditioning treatment and rinse while the hair is still warm. The next tip is pretty obvious. You need to reduce your heat styling. As often as possible, you want to let your hair air dry. Now, there's a couple of things around air drying that are really important. Number one, if you go to bed with wet hair, you actually could be doing yourself a disservice. So even though it seems like you might want to take a shower at night and you know just let your hair dry overnight, because obviously that's plenty of time, you're multitasking, you're sleeping, and your hair is drying, it's not a good idea because you really want to treat your wet hair with kit gloves when you are trying to repair it and sleeping on a pillow and moving around will just rough up a fragile hair especially when wet and can cause you more damage now what you can do is you can dry you can wash your hair in the morning and if you don't have enough time to just let your hair air dry for you know four hours or whatever you can get a hair turban now I've talked about these on this channel a bunch I do really like the ones from Aquas. I think that's how you say it. But there's tons and tons of affordable alternatives to those. They're really, really just really absorbent microfiber-ish type towels that you can put on and they have like a turban. I have mine right here. This is one from Aquas that I've gotten recently. I really like it. But like I said, there are definitely lots and lots that are not as expensive as this brand. And they have the button and the little loop so that you can literally turban up your hair and loop it in and hold it on. And then you can sit it, it can be on your hair for like 15 or 20 minutes and it will dry your hair as if you just let your hair air dry for at least an hour or two. It really, really absorbs a lot of the water and helps your hair get quite a bit more dry. Okay, next one is kind of sound funny to a bunch of you, but use leave-in products. I can't tell you how many people would come to see me as a stylist when I was working behind the chair and they used nothing in their hair after, they wash and condition and they used nothing in their hair. It blew me away because I used so much stuff in my hair that I could not imagine. And inevitably, when I would style their hair, I put a bunch of stuff that I had, you know, into their hair. And always when they left the salon, they were like, why can't I do my hair like you do my hair? Number one, it's because I have a better, you know, access to the entire of your head and it's my profession. But number two, it's because I put leave-in products in. It really makes a huge difference. Not only that, but a lot of leave-in products are heat protective. So if you are going to use heat styling tools, you absolutely want to use leave-in products. The next tip is gonna to be to use a scalp serum, not a scalp scrub. Now, I know that scalp scrubs are all the rage right now, but if you have damaged hair, if you have hair that is fragile, that is prone to breakage, if you're starting to notice you have little, you know, flyaways because they've gotten broken, then you don't wanna do a scalp scrub. I am telling you from experience because I'm a junkie and every once in a while I think, I'm gonna try a scalp scrub again. 
it will inevitably cause some breakage if you are at that point where your hair is in a fragile state from coloring or from heat. Avoid scalp scrubs. Now, if you like the idea of scalp exfoliation, which I think that that is great, look for a product that does a chemical exfoliation because just like our skin, Chemical exfoliation is definitely superior to manual exfoliation. Now, every once in a while, you might like a good facial scrub, but on the regular, it's usually better just to get your exfoliation from alpha hydroxy acids versus scrubs. A lot of these scalp scrubs are just too harsh. They're gonna take your cuticle and they're gonna rough it up, and anybody who has fragile, frizzy, compromised, Overprocessed hair, the last thing you want to do is rough up the cuticle with a scrub. Next tip is to learn how to use dry shampoo. I know that there are some people out there that don't want to use dry shampoo or they can't use dry shampoo. They feel like the dry shampoo has given them scalp issues, or you know, there, there are definitely people that are just like, no, dry shampoo is not for me. For those of you who cannot use dry shampoos, I recommend that you perfect the Mohawk wash. And what that is, is you literally will take the majority of your hair and put it back into a low ponytail or a pony of some sort, and you separate out your Mohawk hair, and that is all you wash and condition, and of course, reapply your leave-in products. This will protect the majority of your hair, including your ends, from getting washed and you know re-dry and reheat style if you do that, etc. And it will also help you to avoid the dry shampoo. Now, everybody else, seriously, practice using dry shampoo. There's a few tips that you can use to get a great dry shampoo. Number one, always keep the dry shampoo six inches off of your hair. So when you're spraying it into your roots, don't get it too close. You don't need it that close. You want to imagine the spray coming out from a dry shampoo as a cone. And you really want the bigger part of that cone, the bigger diameter of that cone to be what is getting to your hair so that it, it spreads out and there's more of a diffusion of that dry shampoo. The next thing that you need to do with dry shampoo is you need to let it sit and do its job. So give it five, seven, 10 minutes if you can to sit there and absorb the oils, etc., and then go in and work it around, etc. You will find that you like a dry shampoo so much more if you just give it a chance to work. Now, another thing that you can do with dry shampoo if you have a hard time with it is use it at night instead of in the morning. So apply it six inches from the root all through the area that you feel that you need it. That might be your entire head. That might just be your mohawk. That might just be your perimeter. Wherever you feel like you feel your hair is dirty, greasy, put your dry shampoo in at night, go to bed, and when you wake up in the morning, you just gave that dry shampoo all night to absorb oil, etc. your hair will feel cleaner and you will not need to wash it, which means you won't need to dry it, which means you won't heat style it, etc. The next tip is to use shampoo and conditioner that has an acidic pH. If you look at the pH, if the shampoo and conditioner actually tells you the pH, you want it to be under 5.5. Now, if you think about things like perms, what they do is they use an alkaline base to swell the hair a ton, break down some bonds, you reshape the hair, and then you apply a neutralizer to reharden those bonds back into the new shape, whether that's a curl with a perm or that's straight with a flat iron, and then you reharden those bonds and now your hair, it's got a different shape. That is incredibly hard. If, if you've ever had a perm, you know how hard that is on your hair. If you've ever had a permanent straightening, you know it takes a toll on your hair. That alkaline swelling of the hair and breaking those bonds and then rehardening those bonds. I mean, we've all seen the bad pictures of perms where people just look horrible. They look, hor they have wrecked their hair. They turn it into cotton candy. That happens because of that swelling, that breaking of the bond is too hard on your hair. So if you have shampoos and conditioners that are alkaline, no, they're not gonna do what a perm does, but over time, that repeated slight swelling of the hair is A, not gonna make your hair look as good as it should in the moment, but B, it's gonna weaken it over time. So you really, really wanna keep your shampoo and conditioner 
in the acidic range on the pH scale and preferably 5.5 ish six at the top at the most or more acidic, which means lower numbers of pH. My final tip is to see a hairstylist when you want to do a big color change. Now, I am not opposed to getting some of your, you know, doing some of your own hair at home. I'm really not. Even when I was doing hair, I would help my clients if they wanted to do their own roots in between, you know, appointments. If they wanted to do just gray coverage at, you know, a little bit of their root, I would help them because I totally get it. Some of these services that I did as a stylist, if I knew I had a client and they were on a massive budget, there was no way I wasn't going to help them do their own roots at home in between their blonding appointments, let's say, their foiling appointments, their balayage, etc. But if you are going to do any of those kind of treatments or you really want to make a huge change, you want to go from being a blonde to a brunette or vice versa, certainly see a stylist at least to see a stylist for the change so that they can, you know, they, they do a formula for your hair. It, I know that it doesn't seem like it's one of those things that is probably massive calculations, but it really is. It re I cannot tell you the times I would sit in the dispense with a stylist who had more experience than me through my whole career, and we would collaborate on what we should do with our client's hair. We would talk about their base, what they've done to their hair, what we've done to their hair, where they want to be. And we would do this whole calculation in order to try and get them exactly where they wanted to be. And it was a learned skill to do that. And the idea, of course, is not only to get them where they wanted to be in their color and their cut and all that stuff, but to get them there with the least amount of damage possible. That was part of that formula was how do I get them to that perfect buttery blonde and not wreck their hair. So I promise you that if you want to make a big change or you really, really want to get, you know, something that is far off than what you have, then go see a stylist at least that one time. Save your money for it because I promise you too, it's far more, in, it's far, far more expensive to totally trash your hair and then have to go see a stylist because then it's a color correction and that's a lot more expensive. So then you either have to fork out all that cash or you have to live with kind of crappy hair. So it's definitely my biggest tip for sure. I do hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.